Have you ever wondered what you're going to wear and use every day on the water in the backcountry of Northern Tier? Well, this video is for you. Hey, real quick, right before we jump into this video, if you'd do me a huge favor and hit that like button. Also, thank you for subscribing to this channel. If you'd like to be notified of future videos, please hit that bell icon. Have a great day and enjoy this video. Right before we get into this video, I just wanna let you know this is a very detailed video. It has a lot of detail in it because I want you to have a great, comfortable, and safe experience where you're gonna spend most of your time at Northern Tier, which is on the water. You're gonna be on the water every day in the backcountry, and you're gonna be in and out of the water all day long. So technically in different environments. So I'm gonna go through every little detail of exactly what I wore and used, or would have wore and used on my trip in the backcountry on the water. Now I know this is a long video, but stick it all the way through, I guarantee you that you'll learn a lot. All right, let's talk about a sun hat. Now this happens to be a cool, I think that's how you pronounce that, uh, sun blade with mesh. Um, I prefer a wide brimmed hat. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One is the sun protection. It kind of, you know, the wide brim protects the sides of your face a little more. The other reason I prefer a wide brimmed hat when I'm on the water is because the uh, if it's raining uh, and you're on the water, there's, you know, there's no protection. So uh, you flip your rain hood up on your rain jacket, put your wide brim hat on top of that and then uh, really just kind of helps keep the keep the rain water uh, from getting in your eyes and your face to help you uh, be able to see where you're going. Of course that's obviously really important when you're underwater versus when you're hiking you kind of put your head down and you know tuck yourself back up inside your rain jacket and you don't really have to have as much perspective when you're hiking and it's raining because you're just looking at your feet. But when you're paddling, you got to keep your head up so you can see where you're going and make adjustments in your stroke to, to navigate the canoe. It just, you got to have a little bit more perspective. Uh, so that's why I like a wide brim sun hat. Another thing with the hat is you need a strap uh, to go down you know, to basically with the with the cinch that you can cinch the uh, hood up on your uh, under your chin, uh, your hat will blow off in uh, windy situations. Remember, when you're out on the water, there's no protection from the wind. Uh, wind can be gusty, it can be flat, calm, and all of a sudden you've got a strong gust of wind come through. So you need a, a cinch uh, to be able to cinch the uh, strap up. Uh, under your chin so that your hat doesn't blow off. It will blow off. Uh, on my trip, I don't think we were on the water for an hour, and uh, my hat blew right off my head uh, going up Moose Lake, and uh, fortunately I had my strap on, of course, uh, but it really bothered me, and so ultimately I ended up uh, clipping my strap also into a carabiner on my life jacket so I knew for certain my hat was not going to blow off in the water because if anything goes in the water you're probably not going to get it back uh, you're not going to be able to turn around and paddle back in time to find it if you can find it because things tend to blend in with the water uh, surprisingly easily uh, even if you think they wouldn't um, so unless it's like a fluorescent orange or green 
Uh, you're, you're probably not, or yellow, you're probably not going to see it uh, in the water. Red, maybe also a good color. Uh, so anyways, you, uh, you need to think about uh, when you are choosing a hat, will it allow you to continue to function, you know, navigating in the rain, in the wind, in the blazing hot sun? You've got to think about all those things. Okay, let's talk about sunglasses. Um, the sunglasses I took on the trip would not be sunglasses I'd recommend, or at least the particular model that I brought. And I'll talk about that in just a second. I brought my Oakleys uh, that I have worn every day for probably 10 years. Maybe not the same pair every day for 10 years, but I tend to wear my Oakleys every day, all day. Uh, so I brought those, natural fit. Morning of day two, after our first portage, I looked down and realized that one of the lenses was missing on my sunglasses. So on the particular pair of Oakleys that I had, you could pop the lenses out. So what happened there was somewhere, and I went back to look, couldn't find it. Uh, one of my lenses popped out, donated it to the Boundary Waters. And so I would highly recommend that you get sunglasses that have a frame that wraps around the lens. So there's no way the lens could just accidentally pop out of your sunglasses. Your sunglasses are extremely important. It's going to be very bright. There's no protection from the sun because you're on the water. The sun is also reflecting off of the water back into your face from the bottom up. Unlike typically when you're hiking, unless you're in snow, and you're climbing in the winter or in the summer, uh, snow reflects sunlight just like water does. So you need a frame that wraps around the lens to prevent you from losing your lens. Also, the lens needs to kind of wrap all the way around your eye so that light is not peeking in through the corners of the lens, okay, because you can get sunlight reflecting off the water behind you, above or below, above from the sun itself, if you're not wearing a wide brim hat, or directly off the water and back up onto your face from behind, and then it will hit the inside of your lens, if your lens doesn't wrap all the way around your face, and make it hard to see. Also, it's really nice if your lenses are polarized, because then you can see through the glint off of the water which is kind of the reflection. And you can see underneath the water and see fish and rocks and trees, and it just makes your life a lot more interesting. Uh, to be a little more particular, the lens color gray tends to offer a neutral rendition of the true colors in the scenery around you. If you tend to get a brown, it tends to highlight or accentuate the colors, but also kind of gives you a false sense of green, like how bright the green is, and some other things. So, Also with your sunglasses, you need a retention strap to uh, keep the sunglasses on your face. So if you capsize the canoe, uh, hopefully when you get back above water, your sunglasses are still on your face or at least around your neck. Because remember, anything that's not, tight, not physically attached to you will get lost it will fall off of you, it will blow off of you into the water, and then it's gone forever. Now to protect your upper body, I highly recommend that you wear a long sleeve shirt. A long sleeve shirt that offers a UPF rating like sunscreen. Uh, I prefer a hoodie, which means it has a hood, so that it can offer some extra protection for up around your neck and the sides of your face. I don't like wearing a buff uh, just because I, I feel like it's kind of stifling and hot and it can get humid in the boundary water, so that would be another detractant. I would recommend that you get a shirt that is uh, comfortable in the tropics where it's hot and humid the entire time. 
so that shirt would uh, breathe well as well as offer some protection. Now, the shirt that I brought happens to be a Patagonia Tropic Comfort Hoodie 2. does not have to be a Patagonia product. Uh, you can wear a Magellan fishing shirt, uh, be perfectly fine. Maybe your crew gets a long sleeve crew shirt that also offers some sun protection. I just know from experience this shirt, this particular sun hoodie, is extremely comfortable to wear. You can wear it for many, 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 many days in a row uh, without washing it in your body odor, and it does not stink. Uh, it is not clammy to the skin. A lot of uh, shirts, I have some ex officio shirts that are claimed to be comfortable in hot, humid weather. They tend to stick to your skin, which I find uh, very irritating. Uh, and they get kind of clammy. Uh, and this shirt does not. Um, you got to understand that you're on the water. You can't change clothes. There's nothing you can do about what the clothes are you're wearing without pulling over, getting out of the boat, undoing your whale bag, pulling out your personal uh, uh, dry bag, and changing clothes. You just don't have that luxury when you're out on the water trying to get from A to B. Maybe you have that time when you're cooking lunch, unless you're doing a floating lunch. So you really need to think through carefully what you're going to be wearing, especially on your top and for your bottoms, uh, that allow you to be out in the sun, a little bit of cold, a little bit of wind, uh, all day, every day, and uh, still be very comfortable. All right, life jackets. The life jackets that are included with your fee for Northern Tier are red, uh, you know, Coast Guard approved paddling jackets. Uh, they are comfortable, they're adjustable, they offer no pockets. And so I chose to bring uh, my own life jacket, and it is a U.S. Coast Guard approved. Uh, you do not want to bring a life jacket that you have to inflate. So this is a life jacket that already has the buoyancy uh, ready to go. So if you happen to capsize the canoe, there's nothing to think about. You're already, uh, your, your life jacket is going to do its job without any interaction on your part. So you need to bring a Coast Guard approved life jacket for on water. You're not going to be doing any white water rafting. And it also needs to be already uh, buoyant so you don't have to inflate it. Uh, this happens to be an angler or fishing uh, style jacket made for paddling. So if you fish from a kayak. Uh, and the reason that style uh, is important is because it typically comes with a lot of pockets. What would you need pockets for? You're going to need pockets for Polo Pure, for uh, purifying water while you're in the boat. You're going to need pockets for GPS, maybe. You're going to need pockets for all kinds of things. And so uh, your life jacket is kind of, kind of like your day pack, if you will. Uh, it's going to have a lot of things in it that you need. Maybe you, uh, you, know, you need to carry something and you're going to need to have quick access to it. And so uh, you, you need, you know, a zippered pocket, maybe a Velcroed pocket, but a zipper pocket's preferred. Uh, so you're going to be amazed at what all you're going to end up using your life jacket pockets for, but it prevents you from having to dig around in your personal dry bag or in the whale bag. It's just right there in a pocket. You can just take a second, unzip it, pull it out, and then put it right back, and uh, and then continue paddling. So uh, you can use the life jackets from Northern Tier. We had a lot of people do that. We also had several people bring their own life jackets, which is what I, I did, and I'm very, very happy that I did. Another thing about your life jacket is it needs to be adjustable. Um, if it's really cold in the morning, you might be wearing your puffy jacket under your life jacket, so you need to uh, think about that. 
Uh, you also need to be thinking about uh, you might be wearing your rain jacket under your life jacket. So uh, it's not going to go on bare skin. So you need to think about all that when you're choosing uh, what life jacket to uh, bring if you bring one. Paddling gloves. So it was highly recommended that I bring paddling gloves, and I'm really glad I did. These happen to be the NRS boaters gloves, and they have a padded palm. They are fingerless. They are not insulated. You do not need insulated gloves. Uh, you are likely not used to paddling every day for hours. Maybe you're on a short day and you're only paddling for four hours. Maybe it's a long day and you're paddling closer to eight hours that day. Irregardless, your hands are not used to that. Plus, with your hands being kind of in the water a lot, the skin tends to get soft and is prone to blisters. Even if you wear paddling gloves, it doesn't mean you're not going to get a blister. So, Luco tape uh, goes a long way to help with the blisters, but paddling gloves, well-fitted paddling gloves, definitely uh, I would highly recommend that you bring paddling gloves. All right, a web belt. I highly recommend that you wear a belt versus suspenders. Um, suspenders tend to slip off of your shoulders when you're paddling. They tend to interfere with your life jacket and may become uncomfortable. Uh, there's just a lot of things that suspenders, uh, you may find that you're frustrated with, with suspenders. I recommend you bring a web belt. This is the Northern Tier uh, belt that you can buy from Northern Tier. It has a metal buckle, so it will likely not break. It's also a non-slip buckle, which means once you cinch it down, it is not going to loosen and then... Uh, allow your pants to slip off of your uh, body. So you're going to be hanging your Nalgene bottle off of your web belt. Uh, you might also be hanging a chair, a canoe seat off of your web belt, a map case, your personal dry bag. So your belt uh, can or will need to be able to hold up a lot of weight. Uh, I tended to clip things to my life jacket, but if you use the Northern Tier life jackets, you may find that you have to clip things to your web belt, and then if you're around camp, you're not going to have your life jacket on, so your web belt is very handy for, you know, walking around carrying your uh, Nalgene bottle. So, a very sturdy, strong web belt with a very strong buckle that allows you to cinch it up and that will not slip out of place is extremely important. All right, a water bottle. Now, I know on the Northern Tier checklist, they only say bring one water bottle. I would disagree with that. I would highly recommend that the water bottle you're going to use every day, day in, day out, be a one liter Nalgene Lexan wide mouth water bottle. It can be a one liter Nalgene plastic wide mouth bottle. I just prefer Lexan because if the water bottle gets hot, the water inside of it gets hot from being out in the sun, the plastic bottles tend to add a plasticky kind of taste to the water, and the Lexan does not do that. Also, the Lexan is almost indestructible, so it's very, very tough. You're going to want a wide mouth uh, lid. Uh, that makes it a lot easier to do a lot of things, uh, like using your Polar Pure and things like that. You're going to want to put your uh, water bottle inside of a uh, the Northern Tier web holster and uh, with a carabiner attached to it, a large carabiner. Uh, so this way when you get in the canoe, you can just clip your water bottle to the gunnel right in front of you or to your canoe seat, and that way uh, if you rotate the canoe, you lose the canoe, um, your water bottle will still be attached to the canoe and you haven't lost it, okay? Uh, the new Northern Tier web holsters uh, tend to be a little loose, 
So I'd recommend that you take some Gorilla duct tape and wrap, put the water bottle inside the holster and then wrap the bottle inside the holster with about three rolls of Gorilla duct tape. I say Gorilla duct tape because uh, it tends to stick to, uh, uh, to remain sticky and do its job even when it's been submerged in water and gotten wet repeatedly. Uh, I do recommend you bring a spare water bottle, but it doesn't have to be a Nalgene bottle. It can be a, a platypus one liter soft bottle that you just keep inside your personal dry bag. Just as a backup, you're, you're being gone for 10 days. There's no store to go to. You lose your water bottle, which does happen, and you're going to be without any way to uh, have your own water bottle. Okay. Also, when you're filling it up, when you're in the water on your boat, make sure that you're not holding on to the cap, that you're holding on to the holster itself. If you hold on to it with the cap, uh, the water bottle as it gets heavy and the current with you canoeing and paddling, uh, your water bottle will separate from your lid and you'll be left holding your lid and your water bottle will be gone. It will be at the bottom of the lake. All right, a waterproof map case. So you'll be buying your maps at Northern Tier once you've decided with your guide, uh, your interpreter, uh, what route you're going to go on. And you're going to need to store those in a waterproof map case that is also flexible and clear so you can see it uh, while you are paddling. Uh, you'll just kind of lay it on your lap and that along with a compass will help you uh, navigate. Uh, this one happens to be an NRS Hydrolock map accessory. It was a size medium, which I found to be adequate in size. Uh, I don't know that I would go to a large. Uh, sometimes if you're doing a lot, a big traverse over the course of a day, uh, you might have to, like at lunch, change, uh, you know, move your map over. But I don't think I would get a size large. I would stick to a size medium. I would not get a size small. You also need a carabiner attached to your map case so you can clip the map. You're basically going to leave it clipped to your belt or to your life jacket. Uh, you will not take that off until you, really, honestly, forever, because when you take your life jacket off, it'll just stay clipped to your life jacket. You cannot lose your map. <laughs> Let me say that again. You cannot lose your map. You lose your map, you're out of luck. You will might have a compass, and you know where you need to go, but you you will not be able to navigate. You will not be able to find anything. You will not find the portage trails. You will not know where to go. You will be completely out of luck if you lose your map. So that map stayed clipped to my life jacket the entire trip in the backcountry, <clears throat> and it did not come off ever. If it came off, it was only because I was flipping the map over uh, inside the case, putting it right back inside the case, and then clipping it right back to my life jacket. Uh, when my life jacket was drying out uh, during the day, it was clipped to my life jacket. I always knew where the map was. That map is your life. You don't want to lose it. Inside your map is going to be a compass, but again, this case stays attached to your life jacket at all times. Uh, when you're in the back, like I was, you're the captain, you're, you're uh, having to navigate uh, like I was as I was paddling. Uh, you just need to be able to glance down and keep up with where you are. So anyways, you need a waterproof map case. This happens to be the NRS Hydrolock map accessory. It was a size medium, and it had a carabiner on it so I could clip it to my life jacket or to my belt. All right, uh, a compass. Uh, you really want a hiking style compass? I brought my trusty Silva Explorer Pro compass so I could add in the declination. Uh, that's going to ride inside of your waterproof map case. So when you are looking at your map, uh, you can get an indication of which way north is. Uh, so you're going to want your compass readily available laying on top of your map. It's not going to stay oriented with up, so you can forget about doing that. You just need it in your map case so you know where it is and you can just flip it up and look at it. 
uh, if it's not laying on your lap while you're paddling. But this is a hiking style compass. So it should be the same compass you have uh, that you're used to using uh, when you're hiking and backpacking. In addition to my hiking compass that was in my map case, I got a little ball compass. This happened to be a Coglins pin-on ball compass uh, that I pinned to my life jacket. And I can't tell you how valuable this little compass was. A lot of the times when you're navigating, you, you just really need to keep up with where you are on the water, and then you need to know which way north is, or south, east, and west. But principally, which way north is to stay oriented. And I can't tell you how often I use this little ball compass. It just pinned to my life jacket with a, with a brass safety pin. And while I was paddling, I would literally just glance down and say, okay, off to my right is north. And then I would, you know, look at my map and just keep up with it. I mean, even though I had my hiking compass in my map case, I found this little ball compass to be invaluable. Extremely, extremely convenient. And in my opinion, very important. All right, a seat cushion. So this would be something that you would put on your seat in the canoe to provide a little bit of padding. Um, some people brought them, some people didn't. I didn't use my seat cushion, which also doubles as a chair uh, for the first few days on my trip. Uh, the seats in the canoe are web seats. They're, they are comfortable. Uh, however, we had a really long day and after that, uh, my uh, my rear end, my I was just sore, extremely sore. I didn't want to sit down. So I would have started off with a seat cushion. Your cushion cannot have straps that allow it to be connected to the actual seat on the canoe. That is a big no-no. It'll break the seat. You do not want to do that. So I would literally just put this in the canoe, and then sit on it. Uh, it does float, so if we roll the canoe over, uh, hopefully, if it's not too windy, uh, the seat would be somewhere close by, if not trapped under the canoe, uh, when we tried to collect ourselves and get everything back in the canoe. Uh, also, you need to be able to clip your cushion to your life jacket or your belt so it needs to have a handle or a strap or something some way to do that uh, strap it to your life jacket or your uh, belt with a carabiner uh, pay attention to how long the straps are so they're not a tripping hazard uh, I was advised that I would not be able to use a regular like camp chair like I would take backpacking that had little legs which turned out to be inaccurate. Um, if I had to do it over again, I might still take this Crazy Creek chair, uh, but I might also bring just a little foam pad and just cut a hole in it and clip it into my uh, life jacket. Um, so anyways, this is what I used. It worked really well. It also doubles as a cushion uh, or a chair to sit on and camp. I would definitely recommend you bring a seat cushion. All right, underwear for males. Uh, I just happen to use the Ex Officio Give and Go Sport Mesh boxer briefs in the six inch version, not the three, not the nine. These are the exact same underwear that I would wear backpacking. I found that they worked extremely well. Uh, they could get wet, they would dry out fast, they were never soggy. Uh, clingy. Uh, they were just a really, really go-to uh, set of underwear to wear. Um, they also don't tend to stink after wearing them for several days in a row. Uh, so this is my uh, underwear of choice for backpacking, anything in the backcountry, and they worked very well uh, up in Northern Tier when you're in and out of the water all day. All right, underwear for females. You're going to have to seek the advice of an adult female or someone that's been 
canoeing a lot, uh, you will be, or paddling a lot, you will be in and out of the water all day long. You will be wading in water, and then you'll be sitting on dry ground or hiking with, you know, portaging with your your uh, crew. Uh, so then you're now you're hiking all of a sudden, then you're back in the boat, you're out of the boat, you're having lunch, you know, so something that's compatible with paddling all day so you're not fussing with uh, straps that are falling off your shoulders while you're paddling. Uh, also, that's compatible with uh, your bottom and being in and out of water all day. So wet, dry, wet, dry, uh, walking, sitting, just think through all that. Uh, the last thing you need is to get out on your trip and then have an issue. So think this through very well before you head out on your trip. Long pants. Uh, much like wearing a long sleeve shirt, I highly recommend you wear long pants. Uh, these happen to be the Eddie Bauer Guide Pro Pants without zip-off legs. I know these pants are expensive, but they go on sale many times a year. Probably five or six times a year they will go on sale. That's when you want to buy them is when they go on sale. Uh, you want the Guide Pro Pants because they, are, they have UPF rating. They have very slim, uh, meaning they have cargo pockets on the sides that don't tend to snag on brush. Uh, which can be important when you're portaging, especially in Canada. Uh, these, This version that I'm wearing on the water, they do not have zip-off legs. I've found that the zipper uh, that allows you to zip off the legs, the bottom portion of the pants, to turn them into shorts, gets very constrictive uh, when you're sitting a long time, like in a canoe seat. So uh, the pants that I'm wearing in the water all day are non-zip-off legs. And I highly recommend you wear long pants because you're going to be in the sun all day. There's no protection from the sun. You're going to be in camp uh, for lunch and you might have to sit in the dirt. It helps keep you clean so you stay healthier that way. Uh, you're portaging. You're uh, having to walk through brush, uh, sharp rocks, just all kinds of things. There's all kinds of benefits to having long pants versus shorts. So again, highly recommend long pants over shorts. Sock liner. Uh, sock liner is a pair of socks that you are wearing right up next to your skin. They need to perform a couple different functions. They need to be thin, uh, so they kind of form a second layer of skin to help prevent blisters and abrasion. And considering the fact that you're in water all day, you're wearing uh, boots that are not waterproof, your feet will be wet all day. So your skin will get soft. So wearing a pair of sock liners is very helpful. These happen to be the right sock, the Cool Mesh 2 Crew Link sock. It's the exact same sock liner that I would wear if I was going backpacking or hiking. Uh, so again, sock liners are really important to help prevent abrasion on your feet and getting blisters because your skin will get soft for being in the water all day and you do not need blisters. Cushion socks. Uh, for the footwear that I chose to use uh, in the water, I needed to wear some socks that had some padding these are the Smart Wool brand Classic Hike, the Full Cushion Crew Link socks. Same exact socks that I would be wearing if I was backpacking. So these provide a little extra padding and cushion. They're also wool, so they also help uh, you know, keep my feet uh, warm. Uh, the water is comfortably chilly, if that makes any sense. It's gonna be chilly when you get your feet in the water, especially early on in the morning. Uh, but your boots will drain the water out, so your socks will stay damp. But if you're wearing uh, wool socks, even though they're damp, they will keep your feet very warm, but not hot. So I found that this worked very, very well.
with my choice of boot. If you are wearing or using the NRS work boot, they have a Neuropreme sock built into the boot, which provides warmth. Uh, and you definitely want to wear sock liners with those boots. Otherwise, you may not get your boot off at the end of the day. But I wore the Merrill Ventilator boots, uh, which are basically hiking boots uh, that are not waterproof. And so I needed the cushion and I need to add a little bit of warmth. Uh, so that's why I chose these socks specifically. Water boots. Uh, Northern Tier makes it very clear, and for good reason, you have to wear boots that are not waterproof on purpose. You need to wear boots that will drain water out of your shoe as soon as you get out of the water. If you wear waterproof shoes, your boot, your shoes will, first of all, you can't wear shoes, you gotta wear boots. They will act as cups and hold that water inside of your uh, boot all day long and you're not gonna be able to take your boots off every time you get in the water. You're gonna be in and out of the water every few minutes possibly or maybe once every two hours, but you will be in and out of the water all day long. So you do not have an opportunity to drain your boots of water and you will be in water up to possibly your waist. You might capsize your boat and end up swimming in the water. So uh, you will definitely be in water over the top of your boots all day long. It was very common for us to be in water that was up to our knees or thighs every few minutes or every couple hours, just kind of depending on how often we are portaging. Uh, I chose the Merrill Moab ventilator boots uh, over the NRS work boot. Uh, I like the Moab ventilator boots. Um, they offered excellent traction. Uh, they were sticky uh, to wet rocks, although at some point, None of the boots are sticky to wet rocks, but they were very uh, sticky to wet rocks. There was one time I was portaging up a very slick, smooth uh, rock face with the canoe. Uh, it was raining. Uh, my boots were wet. The rock was wet. I'm carrying canoe. There's no free hand to keep my balance. It was very steep, extremely steep. And these boots did awesome. They did great. Your boots need to extend up over your ankles. They need to protect your ankles. You're going to be portaging on rough trails. Uh, you will be in the water with uh, sharp rocks on occasion. Uh, smooth rocks, you will slip on moss. Uh, if you are wearing shoes instead of boots, there's a good chance you'll cut your ankles. Uh, your lower legs, uh, or roll an ankle, and you absolutely have to have your feet available to you to uh, take care of yourself. If you can't walk, uh, your crew has a big problem, and you have a big problem. You have to be able to walk at Northern Tier. You know, when you go to Northern Tier, you think, like, oh, I'm going to be paddling all day. Yeah, you're going to be paddling a lot for hours a day, but you're also going to be walking a lot and moving a lot, and you just cannot afford to hurt your feet. All right, I happen to have a backpack on here. Um, I had a bunch of stuff to carry around in the canoe actually a lot of camera stuff so that I could provide you guys with uh, video footage and photographs of Northern Tier. And I didn't really know how to do that, so <clears throat> I happened to bring a little uh, collapsible backpack that I just happened to have. And it worked okay. It's not what I would bring again. Uh, the Wearing a backpack is not compatible with... Uh, carrying a whale bag so that's not going to work uh, you're not going to want to clip it to your 
a life vest, although I guess you could. A 10 liter personal dry bag would be better. Uh, you can put pretty much just about anything you're going to need for being on the water in a 10 liter personal dry bag. Uh, which is what I would recommend and would do differently next time. So I just get a 10 liter personal dry bag with a carabiner and that way I could just clip it to my life vest or my belt for a portage and then I could just clip it to the uh, gunnel of the canoe uh, when I was in the canoe. So this is what I took. It's in the picture. I'd explain why, but I wouldn't do it again. Carabiners. So carabiners are little metal clips. Uh, I tend to only use carabiners for the most part that are the same as climbing carabiners just because I know they won't break. Uh, they're going to have an extremely high working load limit. They also will still open if they're under stress. So if you're pulling on both sides of the carabiner, the gate will still open. Uh, to allow you to undo it. Um, you're going to be using carabiners for all kinds of things. I would highly recommend that you get a carabiner with a uh, does not have a little notch on the inside of where the gate latches, um, like for example the pen, because then uh, those tend to get hung up on your straps or your belt. And you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily going to be able to see what's wrong, and you'll be very frustrated trying to get your carabiner unclipped from your belt or your life jacket. And also on portages, you really do not have time to be wasting. If you're in the boundary waters, there's going to be a lot of people. Uh, many times we were waiting for people to execute their portage so we could take our turn, or it was our turn to portage and we had people waiting behind us. So when you're in a portage, it's kind of like think of a NASCAR pit stop. You're not going to have a lot of time. Uh, it's going to be kind of stressful, can be stressful uh, because you're in such a hurry and you can't afford to lose anything or leave anything behind. Mm -hmm. So little details like the carabiners not having a little notch on the gate with a pen. Uh, so a smooth uh, carabiner design where you can literally just open the gate and just slip it right off your web uh, webbing on your belt or your life jacket, and it's not going to get snagged or hung up. Uh, those little details make a big difference. And note here that, uh, I mean, I have my map case and my chair clipped to my life jacket, uh, which is way more comfortable to clip it to your life jacket than your belt. Uh, this is easy to do because I brought my own life jacket. The Northern Tier life jackets uh, were a little more difficult to do this. It was a lot more comfortable to carry this extra weight on your life jacket where it kind of spreads the weight over your shoulders versus putting all that weight on your belt. And on the other side, when we flip around and look at the other side of myself, uh, you'll see that my Nalgene bottle is clipped onto my vest as well. So little details in the carabiners make a big difference. Everyone will need a watch. You don't need anything crazy. This is a, I mean, your watch just needs to be able to tell the time, obviously. Uh, have an alarm, because you're going to need to get up in the morning, obviously. A timer for cooking and a stopwatch. Uh, sometimes you're running the timer and the stopwatch at the same time. For example, you may be running an hour timer for your Polar Pure, uh, which is the water purification uh, provided by Northern Tier. So that takes an hour. So you'll need uh, you'll need to be able to run a timer for that and a stopwatch because it may be cooking at the same time. So it really needs those functions. If it happens to have hour and a minute hand, you can use it to determine which way south is in case your compass gets lost. But uh, unless it's cloudy, you have to have the sun to do that. This happens to be a Sunto Spartan Ultra watch uh, because I'm an ultra marathoner and I happen to have it because it has a built-in GPS. So even though we brought a standalone GPS, uh, 
I just happen to have this watch as a backup, but then also to be able to track our mileage for the day. So you don't need all that. You just need a watch, be able to have the time, have an alarm, have a timer and a stopwatch. That's what you need. All right. Uh, I did wear a backpack. I would not bring a backpack again, um, but since I have it on, I might as well call it out and talk about what I had. This is a REI Flash 22 uh, backpack. Um, I chose it because I had about that amount of camera gear to bring. There was a dry bag inside to hold all my camera gear. Um, I would highly recommend you just use a 10 liter dry bag clip to your life vest instead of a backpack. Your backpack uh, is not compatible with whale bag, but since I'm wearing it, I was uh, just going to uh, call it out and let you know what it was. All right, uh, I just want to call out this uh, carabiner. Uh, just happens to be on my backpack. This is a very, very large carabiner. It's larger than most uh, people's hands. It has a very large opening, uh, also called a throat. So when you open the gate, which is a little part that moves uh, to allow you to put things, clip the carabiner onto things, that space is very large because you're going to want to be able to clip it directly to your canoe seat or to the thwart in the canoe. Um, so that that is a very quick process. Uh, because when you're on portages, you're not going to have uh, a lot of time to do things. So you need to be efficient. And this just large carabiner allows you to uh, just literally clip your dry bag or water bottle or whatever directly to uh, the canoe. Uh, again, if you roll the canoe over, which can happen, uh, whatever's clipped to the canoe will stay to the canoe. So this way... Uh, when you write the canoe, everything's still there. Also, when you go to find it, you can uh, uh, know where it is. And when you're paddling, if you need a drink of water, for example, you just unclip your Nalgene bottle, uh, take your drink of water, and then clip it back to the uh, thwart or the canoe seat. And that way it doesn't get lost and it's not going to fall overboard. All right, I just want to call out... Uh, the strap on the chair here, note how long it is, and it could be a tripping hazard. Uh, so when you're preparing to leave uh, home to go up to Northern Tier and you decide to take a seat cushion, uh, make sure you pay particular attention to how long that strap is. Uh, this happens to be a Crazy Creek chair, uh, so it doubles as a chair, uh, also as a seat cushion. I found that when I was using it as a seat cushion in the canoe, I had the strap cinched all the way up, which kept the canoe from flopping open, uh, which could have been a problem when I was portaging, getting snagged on things, uh, which in turn uh, made the straps very long, which could get tangled up in brush, or uh, I could have stepped on it and then lost my balance and, and fallen over on a portage with the canoe on my head. So or a heavy whale bag, if you happen to be carrying a whale bag. So just pay particular attention to little details like that so that your trip uh, is an enjoyable one. Okay, I just wanted to call out uh, the retention strap for your sunglasses. Uh, there is a float on this retention strap uh, so that if the my glasses did happen to fall off of my face, they would uh, uh, float around in the water. Obviously you want to try that out in a bathtub or your swimming pool if you have one, uh, a bucket of water uh, to make sure the float will actually float your sunglasses. Uh, this one's black. Um, I don't tend to be a fan of bright colors. Um, if I had to do it over again, I would probably consider uh, bringing, you know, a bright color like neon green or orange or red or yellow uh, because black uh, tends to blend in very well uh, in a lake. 
And so even though the, your sunglasses are out there floating around, you might not be able to find them. So I would recommend that you get a float uh, that goes with your retention strap for your sunglasses, uh, but probably should get at least a float part of it uh, in a bright color so you can see it bobbing up and down like a fishing bobber uh, in the lake. All right, this uh, hat came with a hat strap. You wanna make sure that whatever you bring uh, for a hat, uh, you have a strap attached either around your chin and cinched up, uh, or uh, it's clipped to your shirt somehow, um, because your hat will come off of your head at some point while you're paddling. When you're paddling, both hands are busy holding onto your paddle, um, and you do not have the luxury of being able to hold onto your hat uh, while you're paddling. And it's extremely important to keep your hat on your head, to keep uh, the rain uh, and the sun out of your face and out of your eyes when you're paddling. So you need to know at the end of the day, if you get a strong gust of wind, which could come out of nowhere, uh, that if your hat comes off your head, it is not going into the water and it will be right there um, where you left it. One of the things that I actually got lucky with, I brought a couple extra carabiners. And um, so because I brought my own life jacket, I was able to use one of my extra carabiners and I was able to clip uh, my hat strap to this carabiner which was clipped to my life vest. This proved to be invaluable for a couple of reasons. One, <clears throat> uh, about two hours into, no, maybe the first hour into our actual trip going up Moose Lake from base camp for Northern Tier uh, headquarters, a uh, strong gust of wind came down Moose Lake, blew my hat off. Fortunately, uh, it blew right off my head. Fortunately, it landed behind me. I was in the back of the canoe in the stern. It landed behind me in the seat and did not go off into Moose Lake uh, because it was very windy and choppy and there was a good chance that I would have just instantly lost my hat. Um, I did not have my chin strap tucked up on my chin well enough, and it just blew it right off my face. Uh, so after that, um, I got to lunch, and I figured out, hey, I got this extra carabiner, so I just clipped my uh, hat strap to the carabiner, which was clipped to my life jacket. So now at least I knew it was going to stay on my body and not luckily end up in a canoe, or worse, end up in the lake and disappear, float away or sink. Because um, there's absolutely no guarantees that anything that goes in the water, you're going to get back, even if it floats. Okay, By the time you turn the boat around, you try to see what it is that went missing, and you get over to it, uh, it's just not going to happen. Uh, don't count on it. You'd be very lucky if you got something out of the water that blew out of the water, out of the boat. So because I brought my own life jacket, I could, uh, you know, clip, use this carabiner and clip my uh, hat strap to my life jacket. Uh, the Northern Tier uh, life jackets, you could probably do this as well, um, but there's not a lot of extra room on the Northern Tier life jackets, and you certainly won't be able to figure that out till you get there. The other benefit of having the hat uh, connected to my life jacket was I ended up portaging the canoe and I found that portaging the canoe with a wide brim hat was less than desirable. So I would just take the my hat off of my head and it would just kind of dangle down in front of me uh, uh, while I was portaging uh, the canoe. And then when I got back in the boat, I just put my hat back on my head. So that made portaging a lot more efficient and straightforward uh, by simply having this carabiner and, and clipping my 
uh, hat strap to my carabiner. And let me also qualify this. Even though I did this, my hat was still cinched up around my face. I found that uh, it wasn't cinched up so tight on my face that it was uncomfortable, which is the way that you probably would have to wear it most days. Uh, so I was able to relax the cinch on my uh, strap uh, just because I knew my hat at the end of the day was not going anywhere. It was going to stay right there on my body if it happened to blow off of my head, which it did multiple times, but uh, I never lost it and it never left me. Again, sunla sunglasses strap, uh, you roll the boat over, you just do something as simple as look down at your map, your sunglasses fall off your face, uh, into the bottom of the canoe, you actually put your foot on them. Uh, there's also a lot of times when you're portaging or it's kind of a cloudy day, you're not going to want your sunglasses up on your eyes. So you need to be able to just take your sunglasses off and lay them kind of down on your chest and know that they're not going to get lost, they're not going to go anywhere. Uh, so it's extremely important that you have a sunglasses strap on your sunglasses. So congratulations for making it all the way through this video. I'm sure that you found it extremely detailed. And again, the reason I want to put all this detail into this is so that you can truly understand what you need to wear and use while you're on the water at Northern Tier. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you'd like to support this channel, remember, please subscribe to this channel. Tell your friends about it. Thanks for hitting that like button. Everything here is free. I want to give back to the community. I want to give to you everything here for free. I've been out in the outdoors for a long, long time, and it's great that I can be able to give this all this information to you. That is what's most important to me. If you would like to give back, I do have a GoFundMe page set up and you can follow uh, the link. And if you'd like to, if you're a youth with your parents' support, I would gladly accept your donations. Thank you and have a blessed day.